वेलकम टू द टॉपिक रिस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम द फर्स्ट वन इज द निमोनिया टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दीज कंसेप्ट ऑफ निमोनिया यू शुड हैव अ थर नॉलेज ऑन द नॉर्मल अनाटमी ऑफ अ लंग नॉर्मल हिस्टोलॉजी ऑफ अ लंग नॉर्मल फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ अ लंग देन ओनली यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दीज चैप्टर्स ऑफ निमोनिया इन डिटेल यू ऑल्सो रेफर दी वीडियोग्राफ्स ऑफ द अनाटमी फिजियोलॉजी एंड इवन हिस्टोलॉजी of the md crack series they gives you correct idea about the normal structure the entire thing is not possible to discuss about pneumonia what is important from pathology point of view is the two types of pneumonia bronchial pneumonia and the lobar pneumonia that's what i'm going to tell and let us have a look on the what are the causative agents how we make a diagnosis of pneumonia most of time these are autopsy cases pneumonia we will study as a autopsy cases we receive a lung specimens for some other cause and we may accidentally come to know that a patient is having a pneumonia or sometimes it could be a hospital autopsy lung specimen showing the pneumonia changes so let us have a look on pneumonia normally the lungs are not easily get infected because we have a lot of barriers we have a mucosa which is composed of pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium so this are the one which will predominate cells 90% of the cells are these ciliated cells we have a thick mucous secretions by goblet cells we have also neuroendocrine cells and we have basal cells in the mucosa we have a bronchial glands where we have mucous cells and sera cells sera cells the the one which will secrete the protease inhibitors they also secrete lysosome and even lactoferrin we have myoepithelial cells to contract these mucus and serous secretions and we have bronchioli and we have so called as respiratory tray as such in the bronchioli the lumen will be almost around 2 mm in the diameter and in the respiratory bronchioli we have cuboidal non ciliated epithelium the alveoli are the one which are thin walled air sacs and it is composed of two types of epithelial cells type 1 pneumocytes and type 2 pneumocytes type 1 are the one which are predominant cells 98% of the cells are these type 1 pneumocytes type 2 pneumocytes are the one which will secrete the surfactant that is the one which will reduces the surface tension of the alveoli surfactant is made up of phosphate acyl choline and other protein molecules like a b c d e something like that so it constitute around 15% of the surfactant so we have a lot of uh, host defense mechanism which will prevent the easier infection of the lungs so we have upper respiratory tract we have nasal hairs which will filter it the air what we inhale we have turbinates there is a thick mucus secretions we have cilia we have immunoglobulins like a and we have a saliva we have a epithelial surface and local complementary products are there so all these components will act like a host immune barriers to prevent the infections in the lower respiratory tract we have a cough reflex we have a mucus we have a cilia we have other immunoglobulins like iga igg igm the surfactant is there cytokines are there alveolar macrophages they are the one which will engulf anything that is foreign to the lungs and we have leukocytes and there is a cell good cell mediated immune response so in spite of all these pulmonary host defense mechanisms there is a chance that pneumonia can occur so what is pneumonia in simple words it is inflammation of the lung or more specifically it is inflammation of the alveoli the terminal respiratory unit inflammation of the alveoli is the pneumonia daily the lungs will filtrate almost around 10000 liters of air and respiratory tract infections are one of the most common in the medical practice and they carry enormous morbidity and mortality in spite of all these host immune responses then what are the causes for the lungs being getting infected it could be because of decreased resistance like either it could be generalized immunosuppression or it could be immunodeficiency status itself like what happens in hiv and aids patients sometimes the organisms can be so virulent they can even cause the lobar pneumonias or it could be due to the defective clearing mechanisms like 
defective calf reflex or it could be because of mucosal injury or low alveolar defensive mechanisms or patient can be having pulmonary edema which can again get infected and may be due to a variety of obstructive lesions within the lung parenchyma itself. So let us have a look on the various types of pneumonia. They have been classified in variety of ways depending on the causative agents, depending on the, the liturgical factors, depending on the, the pattern of infections. So they can be viral pneumonias or they can be bacterial pneumonias or they can be mycoplasmal pneumonias or it could be fungal pneumonias. Depending on the pattern of infections, so these are the patterns of infections. If only it's the airway, upper airways get infected, we call it as bronchitis or bronchiolitis. If it is a lung parenchyma proper, if it is get infected, then only we call it as pneumonias. We are dealing with the two types of pneumonia, bronchopneumonia and lobar pneumonia. That is what import, what is important from pathology point of view. And the infection can also lead to the formation of lung abscesses. This is very common again with the tuberculosis. And as such, it is a syndrome. Pneumonia is a big topic where a lot of entities have been described under this particular heading. There, to name some of the few of pneumonia syndromes, so these are the different types of pneumonia, acquired pneumonias, or community, community pneumonias, community acquired pneumonias, or typical pneumonias. The pneumonias which are acquired due to the hospitalization are called as nosocomial pneumonias and they are the ones which are again very common and common in the ICU patients as well. Aspiration pneumonia due to the aspiration of variety of things especially in patient who is a, who is in a coma they are again common chronic pneumonias then necrotizing pneumonias lung abscess and pneumonia in the immunocrop compromised patients community acquired pneumonias could be due to the streptococcal pneumonia that is one of the most common causative agent remember streptococcal pneumonia is the most common causative agent for the pneumonias or it could be due to the H influenza, hemophilus influenza, or it could be due to the Moxerella catalysis or Legionella pneumophilias. Atypical pneumonias could be due to the Mycoplasma pneumoniae or Chlamydia species, or it could be due to the Coxella burnetis. Sometimes, rarely, other viruses like respiratory syncytial viruses, para influenza viruses, adenoviruses, variety of other influenza viruses can cause the atypical pneumonias. Nosocomial pneumonias are the ones which are most of the time hospital acquired, most of the time they are due to the gram negative organisms. So, Klebsiella, Serratia, E. coli, Pseudomonas are the ones which are gram negative and most important causes for the nosocomial pneumonia. Sometimes these could be the drug resistant and they are the ones which will carry very high morbidity and mortality. Staph RAS is again very common, especially the patients who are admitted in the cardiothoracic units. Again, they could be a cause of nosocomial pneumonias. Chronic pneumonias are due to the low virulence of the organisms like nocardia and actinomycosis are the rare causes of the chronic pneumonias. Sometimes even mycobacterium and tuberculosis, tubercular pneumonia, what we call, so that could be also the cause of chronic pneumonias. Pneumonia in immunocompromised patients like in HIV and AIDS patient could be due to the cytomegalovirus. Very, very commonly it is due to the pneumocystis carinii pneumonia. It is so common in AIDS patients. A typical appearing mycobacterium, so called as mycobacterium AVM intracellular, eh, that could be also cause of pneumonia in immunocompromised patients. Sometimes it could be due to the funguses, aspergillosis could be the cause or candidiasis could be the cause. So these are again very common in HIV and AIDS patients and even diabetic patients, they are very common. So with that brief introduction, let us have a look on two types of pneumonias that are important from pathology point of view. One is bronchopneumonia, second is the lobar pneumonia. Diagrammatically to represent bronchopneumonia is the one which will have a patchy area of consolidation. When we use the word consolidation, it is nothing but solidification of a lung. Lung, you know, they are spongy in nature, but whenever they undergo solidification, we will use the word consolidation. Lobar pneumonia, when one lobe, either upper lobe or a lower lobe, is totally undergo consolidation. Have a look on these diagrams. So remember, bronchopneumonia is the patchy 
involvement of the lung. So it's a patchy involvement of a lung, patchy consolidation of a lung. In between, there may be normal lung parenchyma. Whereas lower pneumonia, when entire one lobe is involved, either upper lobe or a lower lobe, sometimes even middle lobe, get involved. So entire lobe should show the consolidation changes. Then we call it as lobar pneumonia. Whether it is a bronchopneumonia or lobar pneumonia, microscopically it appears same. Remember, it is not possible to differentiate microscopically. Most of the time, we will also see the grass specimen, then we label the cases as bronco or a lobar. So, what we see microscopically is the alveoli loaded with the inflammatory cells, predominantly composed of neutrophils. There will be inflammatory edema, which appears as homogeneous eosinophilic. So, the inflammatory edema and extensively loaded with the inflammatory cell infiltrate, mainly the pus cells, neutrophils. Few macrophages, hemocytal laden macrophages, the dust cells, carbon particles, all those things are normally seen also. So, they can also be there in the inward lung. So, bronchopneumonia is most commonly due to the staph or step 2 or sometimes even pneumococci, sometimes even H influenza could be the causative agents. So, what is more important is the patchy consolidation. It is not limited to one lobes. Entire lung can be involved with the patchy involvement of these consolidated areas. What we see is suppurative inflammation under microscope. Usually, it will be bilateral, especially in patients who are immunocompromised, you will see bilateral involvement of the lung. Lower lobes are the ones which are commonly involved in the bronchopneumonia. The complications of untreated bronchopneumonia can lead to the formation of an abscess. They can also lead to the empyema and there can be dissemination of this abscess. This abscess can become an infective emboli and this infective emboli can disseminate in the entire body. So, have a look on this grass specimen. This is very classical case of bronchopneumonia of our own case. So, here there is a patchy environment sparing normal parenchyma in between. So, this is patchy involvement of the lung is bronchopneumonia. So, what you will see under microscope is the, the inflammatory edema, the entire alveoli. You can make out that alveolar lining is totally get destroyed by these inflammatory cell infiltrate, mainly made up of neutrophils, neutrophilic debris. Neutrophilic debris, few macrophages, hemocytron laden macrophages are there. So, this is how the pneumonia appears under microscope. So, here you also you can make out extensive inflammatory exudate composed predominantly of the neutrophils, few eosinophils, few macrophages and you can see that septal lining, the alveolar lining has been destroyed by these extensive inflammatory cell infiltrate. Lobar pneumonia compared to that of bronchopneumonia, here the entire lobe will be get involved. So, there will be a fibrinosuppurative consolidation of the whole lobe will take place. Nowadays, it is rare to see this lobar pneumonia due to probably antibiotic treatment. 95% of these lobar pneumonia cases are due to the streptococcal pneumonia. So, that is one of the most common causative agent. What is more important in a topic of lobar pneumonia is you have to remember the four stages of lobar pneumonia. Stage of congestion, stage of red hepatization, stage of grey hepatization and stage of resolution. Hepatization means looks like a liver. So, liver like consistency will be there for these lungs. That is why we use the word hepatization. In stage of congestion, you will see a lot of edema and even RBC exudate, RBC will be there in the exudate. So, red of red appearing areas, so red congested areas. So, that will be replaced by appearance of a fibrinous exudate that gives, that makes the lung more and more solid. So, that is why red and grey hepatization will take place followed by congestion. If at all you treat the case, then only the patient will show the fourth phase that is resolution or if you do not treat, the patient will end up the life with the red or grey hepatization itself. So, the etiological factors, mainly it is the streptococcal pneumonia in adults. In children, you should remember H influenza is the most common cause of pneumonia and in alcoholics, diabetics and elderly, it is the Klebsiella is the causative agent. So, classical grass specimen of the lobar pneumonia, you can see that entire lower, lower lobe is showing a consolidation. So, this is grey hepatization of the lobar pneumonia stage. Untreated cases will show formation of a lung abscess where there will be a focal separation with the total necrosis of the lung tissue. 
the causative agents are again streptococcal pneumonia staph sometimes gram negative and even anaerobes the formation of lung abscess could be due to the aspiration aspiration pneumonia if not treated can lead to the formation of lung abscesses post pneumonic cases septic embolism and sometimes even neoplasms obstructive neoplasms can also lead to the formation of a lung abscess patient will have a productive cough sometimes high grade of a fever clubbing is said to be very classical of these lung abscesses clubbing of the fingers the complication of untreated lung abscess will lead to the systemic spread of these lung abscesses they act like a septic emboli it can also lead to the septicemias so that is little bit about uh, these two types of pneumonia bronchopneumonia and lobar pneumonia